That's right guys, we're back with another video. Today we're going to be unboxing the brand new 501st Clone Trooper Deluxes. Yes, and yes, I have two of them. And yes, I got them from Pop Collectibles. If you're wondering where I got these, that's where I got them. Discount Code Patrol. Check out the link in the description below. Shout out to them for getting these super, super fast. Uh, I did get two of them and I have... I must confess, if you've been following the channel, I, I'm going to get 12. That's the current plan is to get 12. So I got 10 more coming. I've got six coming for... Uh, anyways, I got a lot coming. We're going to be army building. And when you see the posing section we're going to pull off in this video, you are going to understand why having a whole army building of these things is just it's going to be amazing on the display. So let's, let's talk about this for a second. One, uh, I gave you guys some sneak peeks of that this was going to be dropping in some recent videos and Instagram posts and Facebook posts. So I gave you some, some hints as it was coming. I really, really wanted Rex to be here for the party, but hopefully he'll be here in time for the other ones to get here. I, you know, I don't know. I'm just, we need Rex. I need Ahsoka to do the display that I want to do, but to say I'm hyped, for this unboxing is an understatement. So let's go ahead and check out what's in the box. All right, guys, we got the box right here looking awesome with the 332nd helmet on there. We got the phase one, we got the phase two. I got the deluxe. You know I had to get the deluxe. I bought way too many of these. Well, I, didn't buy, I bought a lot of these. Anyways, this box is normal Star Wars box. Nothing super crazy with this one. It does have, obviously we got the main helmet on there. We do have the deluxe version, which I think it would be absolutely crazy to not get the deluxe. So many accessories, so many accessories. And for the little bit of money you're gonna to pay to get extra stuff, there's no way you could get this phase one, phase two, uh, 332nd, back bit, jet pad, all that kind of stuff uh, on the aftermarket later on if you decide to change your mind. It does have this weird yellow band going down the side. I, I don't know, it would be better if it was orange, but it is what it is, it's fine. It just kind of really stands out. But 501st, TMS 023 on the line. And I cannot wait to get a whole army build of these. On the side, we've got the uh, guy holding a long rifle. We've got on the side, it says 501st Battalion Clone Dribber. And on the back, we got all the whodunits. Star Wars on the top, Star Wars on the bottom. But you guys aren't here for that. We're going to go ahead and open this up and check out the insert. I have saved us a little bit of time taking the clamshell out, uh, but here's the insert. It looks great. With that rotary blaster, I'm super excited to see how that thing looks on the actual figure. Now just look at that insert. It's freaking beautiful. Let's go ahead. I've, like I said, I've already taken everything out. Let me go ahead and get this thing out of here and look at the clamshell. All right, here's the clamshell. We're going to have two of these, actually. We've got the top portion. We got the... Actually, we have three because we got this little clip with the uh, hands and everything. The bottom portion's got the jet packs and all that stuff. We'll take a look at that in just a second. I really want to break into the actual uh, figure really quick like, and then we'll obviously we're going to come out here and take a look at all the accessories. So let me grab this knife. Let's get this thing opened up. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually pretty stoked for this. We've got hands. We've got a backpack, which is Pretty nice to have. We had that with the deluxe sideshow pieces as well. Um, but then we've got the figure itself. We've got three different helmet auctions and I've already removed all the plastic. If you follow me on Instagram, you would know I already unboxed this partially. Look at that freaking paint job in that phase two armor. Come on, man. That it looks absolutely freaking gorgeous. Look at that. Dude, come on. Got the 332nd helmet. We got the phase one helmet. We're definitely going to break those out. The phase one, uh, some people have said it may be a little large. We're going to definitely take a closer look at that. But this phase two helmet is beautiful, I think. So let's get that clamshell out of the way. Let's take a look at what else it comes with, uh, which is actually quite a lot. So on the bottom tray, we have the uh, display base, which has had some controversy. Let's see if mine came in with the wrong name on it. We'll see. I, I don't know. Uh, chances are it has. Pretty much everyone I've seen has had the wrong name on it. But, uh, you know, maybe we got lucky. Did we get lucky? And the answer is no. No, we didn't, we didn't get lucky. 501st Batlalion Clone Trooper. Now, it is unfortunate. It's an expensive piece of, uh, you know, collectible. But uh, I'm probably not going to use the display base, so I'm not too terribly uh, upset about it. If you got the first batch one, probably got the wrong name. Maybe the second batch, they will fix it. So we've got the dynamic stand. We've got weapons galore. we got all kinds of stuff. So let me go ahead and get everything, you know, just like oh, this jetpack. Come on. It's just so much stuff. Let me get all this stuff out of the box. I'll be right back. All right, so we've got all the accessories out of here, which is Quite, quite a lot, honestly. There's a pile of stuff on here. And uh, it, it, there's just 
so much stuff. It is absolutely insane. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these things. We've got weapons, we've got jetpacks, we've got hands, we've got helmets, we got display stands, dynamic stands. It is an absolute plethora of accessories. And the posing options at the end of the video are gonna be a lot of fun. So we have the display base, we do have this dynamic flight stand. Because the 501st, at the end of uh, seventh season, uh, they were had the jetpack thing going on, uh, helping out Obi-Wan, rescuing him, and doing all kinds of awesome stuff. So dynamic flight stand's awesome. Uh, it's probably the only reason I would use that uh, stand. We do have the backpack, which again, we saw this with the deluxe clone troopers from Sideshow, but this might be a little bit, there's, there's some improvements on this one. So it does have these straps, but it looked like they have like a almost glued on or stuck on pads on them. There's fabric material underneath it. And then they've got these little squares, which look screen accurate. So I think they look fine. The uh, the paint applications are insane. So pretty excited about that. It also has a magnet right here versus a peg. The Sideshow ones have a peg and it just doesn't stay all that great. So the magnet is a very nice touch. Super happy about that one. So uh, yeah, you can put all kinds of stuff in there. Weapons, hands, uh, droid poppers, you know, whatever you want to put in that backpack, it'll definitely hold it. But check out the paint applications on this thing. It is absolutely freaking beautiful. The weathering on it, the the uh, the paint application, the colors of it look fantastic. And pretty much everywhere you see like a crease or a bend or whatever, they've gone in and add some weathering touching with it, some dry brushing, whatnot. It looks great all over this thing and it matches the figure really well. So there's something kind of shaking around in mind. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, there's nothing on the inside. It's just kind of shaking around on the bottom. So I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later or I probably will just end up uh, ignoring it to be quite honest with you. But these straps, pretty much if you want to put them on the figure, you just bend the arms backwards, throw it on the figure just like you would a backpack for a normal human being. So, you know, I think it looks pretty good. So moving on to the next piece, we've got the jetpack, which is again, beautifully painted. Absolutely fantastic and big fan of this piece uh, because of display options. Uh, it is magnetic. It does have some felt material in the back so you don't actually mess up the paint applications on your trooper, which is nice. We don't have to deal with this stupid straps like we saw in the previous Boba Fett figures. So magnets for the win. Uh, and it, just look at the paint apps. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. I mean, it just, it's its awesome. So it's not overly done. It's just, you know, it's just, just, just right. I think I, in my opinion, I think it's just right. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this nice little blue coloring going on here and just everywhere you look, there's some weathering, even on the backside of this thing. So it does have a pretty cool feature. You've got the flame effects, the jetpack flame effects, if you want to add those on there, which definitely look familiar. We've seen this with a uh, Mandalorian. We've seen them with Boba Fett. We've seen them with uh, heavy Mando. We've seen them with different figures. Uh, they go on fairly easily. They just kind of peg into the bottom. And um, one of the, one of the actually interesting things of this is the way it actually spreads off to the side. It doesn't actually go straight. You see how it goes like at an angle. Uh, that's kind of nice because when you're dealing with a display stand, I think that's going to come into play a little later. So I think that's a pretty nice touch. And it, it looks like it's, I don't know, it just looks a little more, more cool rather than if they were just straight up and down. Um, uh, but I think they look absolutely freaking gorgeous. It does have this extra piece on the top that you can remove this missile. Dude, who do, who even knew about this? This is crazy. This is freaking awesome that you're able to pull that, that missile off almost like rocket firing Boba Fett from way back in the day. The Mandalorian's firing these rockets. You can actually put the flame effect in there and it pegs into the bottom, bottom of this missile and it can look like it's like firing off. That's crazy. That is crazy. Like Hot Toys, that was, that was a nice touch. It was an unexpected surprise. So I think that looks pretty freaking sick. Um, and I may even use that on display. So we'll, we'll see how that plays off. I don't know in the posing section, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll get there and have some fun with it. Um, but I think this, uh, jet pack is absolutely flipping gorgeous. Man, I'm hyped about this. Come on. Just looks gorgeous. All right. So we do have a pile of weapons. we got a pile of hands. Let's take a look at the hands first. We got a right and a left trigger hand. So they're nicely painted. Again, the weathering is not overdone. It's light. Uh, I think it, it looks fine. It, it matches the figure, matches the backpacks, everything. I think it's fine. Right and the left trigger hand, we get some gesturing hands as well because clone troopers make all kinds of gestures. We got a little pointing hand, we got another pointing hand, just gesturing hand, move forward hand. And um, yeah, super excited to have these. I and mean, we need more, more hands that with different gesturing options would be awesome. We got a thumbs up hand that we saw with 
uh, Cody, and we got like a waving hand, but I think we're gonna need that one for one of the weapons, honestly. So I think that's how it's gonna play out for those. And then we've got these droid poppers, which are flipping awesome. So these droid poppers, you get two of them. You get one that's kind of flat, all right? And then you get another one that's kind of expanded. And it would be kind of interesting if these were magnetic. I don't think they are, but if they were magnetic or something, if you were to attach the flat side to like a, a battle droid, if you had one, I think that would be a pretty cool uh, touch, a little display option. But I think you have to do like blue tack or like some double-sided tape or something. But the droid poppers look pretty freaking cool. Again, paint apps, they look good. So if they don't fall off, don't fall off the table. What are you doing? Get back over there. All right, so uh, then we've got the blaster. So we have our DC-15S blaster uh, that we've seen with countless other clone troopers. I do have the Sideshow one right next to it. So you can, this is actually from Cody, from Sideshow Cody. You can see the differences in the size, the differences in the paint. Uh, we'll take a closer look at that. But this is painted well. I think the weathering on it, the silver uh, wash on it, the dry brushing, I think it looks fine. This part is weird. That stock's supposed to go all the way back, but it doesn't. The Sideshow one does. Like that's how it's supposed to go, but the Hot Toys one doesn't. That is strange. I don't know why that is, but it is what it is. Uh, the Satchel one has silver painted bolts. The Hot Toys one does not. So, I mean, just, I don't know. It's one of those things. But the Satchel grip is humongous. Humongous compared to the Hot Toys one. Although the Satchel one, they actually gave you hands big enough to handle it, so that's fine. Uh, but this uh, DC-15S looks great. Pretty excited for this one, and uh, we'll see how it plays into the posing section of the video. So we next up, we do have the uh, DC-15A long rifle. Again, same paint option. All these are painted extremely well. This is a huge weapon, uh, but it is, I mean, a staple in the clone universe. And you've got the dry brushing going on with the weathering on the scopes and whatnot, and it's just, it looks great. The stippling on the grip, it looks really, really good. So pretty stoked for this one. I think it looks fantastic. And um, it's good. They're a little bit of a challenge depending on your display space because they're so large. But I think, uh, you know, I think it's, they did a good job with that one. So next up, we've got the, let's see, the RPS-6 rocket launcher. We didn't even see a rocket launcher with the previous Sideshow offerings. So to have this is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, I dig it. I think it's just another weapon in the arsenal. It would be cool if we actually had an attachment like that that missile uh, to come out of the uh, maybe the front or the side. It, it just but it doesn't attach. But that would have been a cool touch. They didn't have to do that, but it would have been pretty nice if they did, honestly. So that's pretty cool. And they had a little, little green paint there for the sights and our targeting, and it looks pretty good. So I dig that one. Last but not least, the one I'm most excited about out of all of these things, the Z6 Rotary Blaster. This thing is freaking awesome. I loved it when I had a whole pile of clones, uh, Clone Trooper Deluxes, Clone Shiny Deluxes, those kind of things. And uh, this was one of my favorite weapons to display. And the paint applications are, I mean, they're what you expect from a hot toy piece. They're freaking amazing. Uh, the grip on the uh, side, on the back of it is a little large. We'll see how that plays into with the posing. Um, but the paint apps looked great. You got a handle at the top, uh, which is, should be fairly straightforward. And then the barrel freaking turns like, come on the barrel, the barrel turns, man. That's, that's insane. Absolutely insane. Um, it would be awesome if you like an engineer or somebody could have, uh, a customizer, like make it actually turn via electronics. That would be amazing. Maybe some light effects, sound effects. That'd be pretty sick. Uh, the barrel paint, uh, the weathering on the end of the barrels look great. And the, it's just, I don't know. I like it. Can't wait to display it. Looking super, uh, super forward to making that happen. So that's a whole lot of stuff. But now we got some helmets to take a look at it because just, just, let's just do this. So the phase one helmet, let's take a look at this. The phase one helmets in Clone Wars, one of my favorite helmet styles out of all of them. But uh, I've heard some people complain about this one. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. The paint applications are beautiful. No issues with that whatsoever. I think it looks great, even on the back. Uh, the blue markings may not be, um, you know, act super accurate, but I'm I'm okay with that because it fits with the uh, the figure. They could have made us buy a total separate figure to get a Phase One helmet, and they didn't. We just got to pay an extra like thirty bucks or so to get the deluxe. So 100% worth that for the Phase One helmet. This looks, it looks awesome. Now we get the Phase Two helmet. 
big fan of this one as well. Obviously, we're moving towards uh, the new Bad Batch, and they're starting to use these these helmets. Um, but the, this right here looks fantastic. So, big fan of this one all around. It's just gorgeous. Look at the, the high gloss on the visor, the paint apps. Just, I mean, come on. Come on, guys. It's freaking beautiful. Look at the paint. Woo. Yeah. Pretty stoked for this. Got a, a ball peg and, and the neck joint there and everything else. It just looks, it looks great. Comparing these two together, just kind of see what's going on. Um, I do think the phase one helmet is a little large. I think it's, uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's a little oversized, I think. And I think part of, if you look at this gap around the jawline, see that gap between the ear and the chin uh, on the jaw and it, the phase one doesn't have that, which makes it appear a little larger. So I think that might have something to do with it. We'll see, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, but I think it actually is scaled a little larger and I don't know why that is. It's kind of uh, maybe like 3% large. I don't know what the exact, I don't know. Uh, the bottom of it, you've got different attachments on the neck, the way the collar comes down on that neck. Uh, the, the phase two is not as long as the phase one. Uh, it just gives, there's more plastic there. It gives the appearance of it being a little oversized. So we do have, the one that I probably will end up displaying with, which is the 332nd helmet. This one, oh man, so gorgeous. Can't wait to get Rex and Ahsoka in here and have a whole freaking batlalion of 501st or 332nd helmets. It's gonna be freaking amazing. So um, this looks great. Definitely worth the price of admission for the deluxe. It's just, it's amazing. Absolutely beautiful. So. There is no way I would get regular and uh, not have this helmet. I, I needed to have it. And I think the paint applications are great. The colors are great. It's definitely a vibrant orange versus like a Cody, which we'll probably look at a little later. Um, but it's more of like a deep neon kind of orange. It's, it's freaking cool. So we're going to get the figure out here, see what's going on with this thing, because honestly, this is, is going to Oh, I wanted to do one more thing. Sorry. I want to do one more thing just for you guys. Uh, I figured somebody would ask this. I took Commander Cody's head, put it on the 501st, and you give the guy and just an idea what it looks like. The neck is a little long. I mean, it doesn't have that helmet uh, to kind of sit down and go a little deeper. So the, the head's, uh, it's a little tall, got a little giraffe neck. But I think depending on how you pose it, you might be able to pull it off. I mean, it doesn't work for me. But um, yeah, you can see it's just, uh, it just doesn't have that enough uh, distance between the actual neck joint. Uh, in the neck. It just looks a little giraffe-like, if you will. So we're not going to be doing that. Let's put on this uh, other helmet and the 332nd helmet. We'll see what it looks like on the figure. Um, but you guys can let me know your thoughts. Are you going to put Cody's head on there or maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see what Captain Rex's head looks like on the figure and how they manage that. But the 332nd helmet on this figure is freaking gorgeous. Come on. Come on. It's freaking gorgeous. Man, look at this. I mean, that's that's what we're talking about. That's, I'm telling you, man, one of, probably one of my favorite releases of 2021 so far right here. So we do have the uh, range of motion here. We have the shoulder uh, pauldron on an elastic band. So that's moves around very easily. No issues with that whatsoever. You can get that out of the way. That arm goes up way high, way high. So no issues with that. So that's gonna be super easy as far as posing goes and holding up rifles and whatnot. I uh, got a double bend on the elbow, which you're gonna have some issues with that sh the elbow joint. I think if you really wanna get a like crazy bend out of that, you could go as far as to remove that that uh, elbow piece, if depending on what pose, and store it away for future use, put it back when you're ready. That might be an option. Um, the torso with uh, as wise, you gotta watch out because uh, adding the head on there, that top part, you can actually see my hand through there and this kind of rides up a little bit when you're manipulating it. So you gotta make sure you push it back down and uh, so you don't have those gaps because that would be kind of unsightly. Nobody wants that. Uh, plenty of range of motion on the shoulders, no issues with that. Torso wise paint, it looks beautiful. I mean, I don't know what's going on with this eye, just a design choice. I don't know what's up with that, but it is what it is. Um, the weathering on this looks just like the backpacks. It really does. The jetpacks, the backpacks, everything looks looks great. Uh, this is where your magnet's gonna go for your jetpack. And the belt is actually like a vinyl material. It's like a soft material. So that should be easy. If it was that really tough material, that would kind of suck. But the, the uh, detonator on the back does not come off, which is awesome, because nobody likes that, honestly. This belt 
paint applications look absolutely freaking gorgeous. Uh, ab crunch, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot of ab crunch, but that's to be expected with a trooper. Got yeah, plenty of torso twists, though. Plenty of torso twists. Uh, I think we're going to have some, a lot of fun with that. And, uh, yeah, the head, uh, plenty of range of motion on the head. He can look down pretty far. He can look up you know, pretty good ways. Uh, see, on a ball joint, he can go left, right, uh, spin around if you want to do an exorcist thing. Uh, but uh, pretty, pretty average range of motion on the neck. Uh, I don't think there's anything crazy. Uh, paint applications, again, absolutely beautiful. And I'm just telling you, man, this thing is just, man. Paint applications on the uh, the uh, legs here. You can see the material, like it's a nice, flexible material. Uh, it's not gonna be too difficult to pose. It's like an elastic synthetic material. And you can see it's kind of moving around, very easy to deal with. Double bend on the knee, no issues whatsoever. And there are my, that's where I popped the leg off. And uh, we're gonna have to put the, the foot back on there. So <laughs> the fun joys of unboxing figures. So that's how it goes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, uh, whoa, ratcheted joints. All right, so we got ratcheted joints on the, uh, on the thigh, on the upper leg or the hip joints. It can go out way far and I just knocked the leg off again. So that's super fun. And uh, he can do a ridiculous split. Like that's insane. Let me get this leg, no, this uh, foot. That, that's a ridiculous amount of range of motion, guys. It really is. Um, I mean, try to do that with any other Stormtrooper. The ratcheted uh, joints absolutely allow that to be happening. And we'll see if that's a problem later on, if the ratchets get in the way. I don't know. Um, but I think it's pretty freaking cool, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for those. They should add ratcheted joints in the arms and shoulders as well, but they didn't. So the legs can go up pretty far. You can actually rotate. Um, they don't go back so far because of the butt plate. So not a whole lot going on there. But forward, you can actually rotate that thigh armor and get it up pretty freaking high. A little bit of like a mini ratchet joint in the knees. You can feel it. You, you wouldn't be able to hear it, but you can feel it when you're maneuver, maneuvering that knee. Uh, they're they're going to lock into place. No issues with that whatsoever. So yeah, it's uh, just a just a gorgeous figure all around, guys. Just a gorgeous figure. Look at that freaking helmet. Whew. Dude. I mean, seriously. Just, just gorgeous. Look at all these accessories and everything. It's just actually beautiful. So I do have the phase one um, sideshow clone right here, uh, Cody, and his joints are super loose uh, versus uh, the new one. Uh, but we'll, we'll compare the phase one helmets for the uh, sideshow one versus the Hot Toys one, kind of see what they look like size-wise. Uh, and you see that uh, armor kind of rode up a little bit again. So that kind of sucks. But, but we're going to get this helmet on there and have some fun with it and uh, see what these guys look like together. I think, yeah, I think this, uh, I think this phase one helmet looks a little large. I think it looks a little large. But let's find out here in a second. We'll break out um, this other phase one Cody and compare these guys. But I, I do think, just taking a look at this, on the body, don't, don't you guys think the head looks a little large for the phase one? The phase two, I don't think has this problem because it's got that gap in the, in the between the ear and the jaw. Yeah, it just looks a little bit more slim. So I don't have any issues with that whatsoever. But yeah, I don't know. This phase one looks a little, so it looks a little, it looks a little wide and it looks a little long. They like the chin, uh, where, where it kind of goes along, but look compared to the Sajo one. Like the Sajo one looks like it's scaled properly. The Hot Toys one looks a little large. And maybe it's the shoulder armor that's making it do that. You see on Cody, like he's got the large shoulder armor. And then he has smaller shoulder. Uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's what's throwing me off. I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comment section down below. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of... Uh, I don't know. I'm like, I'm probably going to display mine with the 332nd helmet anyways, but you can see the comparison between these two guys, which I think looks pretty stinking good. So yeah, there's that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pop this other helmet on there. And we're going to get uh, not too distant features of face two helmet back on there and get to the posing section. As I just dropped the backpack for my hot toys, commander Cody, <laughs> 
magnets. Uh, somebody asked me earlier if I'd com uh, compare these two, so I figured, what the heck, here we go. Um, but there's Commander Cody. The colors look fantastic. The size looks great. Uh, the one benefit the 501st has is it doesn't have that stupid removable forearm. That thing was a nightmare on Cody. I know most people did not like that, including myself. But uh, yeah, that that just uh, that that just I was not a fan of that whatsoever. But I think these two together look pretty stinking good. So I think what we got to do now: break out the accessories, break out some poses. Let's go make it happen. All right, guys. So this first pose we're gonna break out. I really want to keep it super simple to compare the Phase One Trooper versus the Phase Two, and depending on which one you might like to display yours as. So we kept it simple. I put the backpack on the phase two. I've got the phase one holding that uh, DC 15 S. And I, I think this is a, I think they look great together. You can have them certainly paired together like this. You can take a look at the helmet. I think the phase one helmet definitely looks a little large compared to the phase two, uh, as we talked about just a little bit ago. And uh, I, again, I think it's just due to the uh, that jawline, the way, just the way that helmet's shaped. Looking at some helmets that I actually have in the studio, I think it's a little it's a little too wide in proportion uh, versus uh, you know the phase one helmets are pretty narrow, so I think this it's just a little wide. And I think that's kind of throwing it off. In addition to that, without having those shoulder armor that are just huge, uh, like on Commander Cody, I think that's kind of throwing it off a little bit as well. But regardless of that, I think they look great, and uh, I hope you guys are ready for some awesome posing because I am. Let's get to it. All right, you guys are not ready for this. I'm telling you, I've got, this is what I'm freaking talking about. I've got my 501st phase two rescuing Denal, who just happens to have a phase one helmet, just happens to have it. But I got one guy with the heavy repeater and blaster, the Z6. That thing is uh, awesome, the rotary blaster. And then I've got Denal on the ground, who's being dragged along, rescued by another 501st. And come on, man. Tell me that's not an epic display. Tell just just picture it with a pile more troopers on the display, fighting some clankers, fighting General Grievous when we actually end up getting General Grievous from, from Sacho. Um, just I mean, come on. Tell me, tell me this is this is freaking I would buy this as a statue. I think I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm pleased with myself on this particular pose. I gotta be honest with you. Uh, it was not without its problems. I gotta be quite honest with you. Um, definitely not without its problems. That, uh, that rotary blaster, complete pain in the ass. I gotta be honest with you. So they did not include hands specifically designed for that weapon. They, they don't exist. There are no hands specifically designed for that weapon. So that is quite unfortunate, honestly. Uh, so the left hand is actually the trigger hand, which goes on not too bad. The right hand, if you're gonna have them right-handed, the right hand, if you try to put a trigger hand on that that uh, stock, it ain't freaking happening. It, it, it ain't happening, man. That grip is too freaking wide for that hand. So then what you end up doing is using the relaxed hand that it comes with out of, out of the box, and he doesn't actually hold it. It is, a, it is complete, complete frustrating, super, super frustrating. Like I, I, Sideshow, when they made theirs, they gave you specific hands for this weapon. Hot Toys did not. They 100% dropped the ball on that. Complete fail on that particular weapon, which is one of the best freaking accessories in the box. It's so frustrating. So frustrating. Regardless of that, regardless of that, we're gonna, we're, I'm still I'm still in love with this thing. Still in love with this thing. Look at it. I've got Denal being dragged back by his brother. I've got him as he's being dragged back. He's shooting at some clankers. I mean, come on. The paint applications are just absolutely gorgeous on this thing. The backpack's cool. I'm probably going to throw some extra stuff in the backpack. I do like the magnets. I do like those. And I like the rotary blaster. I just It was such a pain in the butt to mess with. That it just kind of uh, kind of took the fun out of making this happen, and the, of course the bad part about it is now I'm gonna have to undo this awesome pose. Then all back there like getting saved. I'm gonna have to undo this awesome pose so I can show you guys another pose, and that, that hurts me right here in the heart, guys. <laughs> it hurts me because it's freaking awesome. But I'm gonna do this for you, so you better hit the like button. You better hit the thumbs up button. Oh, yeah, let's uh, let's do another one. Hey, we got it. We, ha we had to break out the jetpacks. We had to do it. We had to get these 501st up in the air. We had to bring their leader 
Anakin to the table. Come on. I mean, whoo. Good God, this is awesome. <laughs> Can you guys tell I'm having way too much fun with this? Like, this is this is awesome. I'm I'm having I, I I know the the portion of these videos that take me the absolute longest is this section right here, but I enjoy it and it just takes me forever. I know other there's anyways. I could have pumped out an unboxing in like 10 minutes. That ain't a big deal. This section right here, this is what it's about. How are these things gonna look on your shelf? How do you make it into an awesome display and feel like you spent, I mean, I got what, $900, well, probably Anakin. There's $1,500 or $1,600 in figures sitting on this table with these three figures. How do you make that look like it should look on the display case or shelf, on your desk, whatever it is? And right here, these three figures, if you only got two 501st, this would be an epic display if you already had an Anakin, or maybe you've got maybe you've got Obi Wan because you couldn't get Anakin, or you know whatever. Maybe you're gonna get Rex and then two of the five first. How are you gonna do it? These jetpacks with the flame effects look amazing. I mean, I I did take a little Iron Man inspiration for the poses. So just some recent Iron Man poses I did uh, a little while back. I kind of took some inspiration for those. Uh, he the one issue with the blaster, the DC 15S, is that small part on the front doesn't actually peg in. So gravity will pull that down as you can see right here. And it's a little unsightly and it's a little annoying. But I'm not gonna let that, uh, th that's way less hassle than the rotary blaster with the, the hands that don't fit. The Anakin looking freaking badass right here, guys. Come on, like if, I, I know I'm getting 12 of these and I know 90%, 99% of the people are gonna get two. Uh, I know some of you guys are getting six, uh, which is an incredible number as well. Um, it's not a competition. I just want to let you know, just, these are the type of things you could do with two figures. Uh, just imagine what you could do with a lot of figures. That's all. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm getting to. This is freaking awesome. The sad part is now i got to tear it apart and do another pose. But I'm going to do it because you guys have already subscribed. And you hit the comment section and you hit the like button. And I know you did. So let's do another pose. All right, guys, next up, I've got Commander Cody in here. I put Anakin off to the side. I brought in a Geonosis battle droid. I don't have any of the other battle droids, so I've got a pair of the Geonosis ones. Uh, I've got our 332nd helmet on there. I've got one guy holding a clanker by the neck. I've got the other guy down with his rocket launcher looking all kinds of amazing. And yeah, I'll be honest with you, the rocket launcher to set that thing up, super easy, barely an inconvenience. It was actually quite, quite simple. No issues whatsoever. And I love, absolutely love the way these uh, 332nd helmets look. But take a look at the difference in colors between Cody and then the 332nd. You see that like neon reddish tangerine orange versus the almost almost desaturated orange of Cody. Um, it's uh, vastly, vastly different. They look good together. I, I don't have any issues with them. I can't wait to get some 212th or some Uda piles, some airborne troopers to go with Cody. But for right now, we don't have those. And I don't have Rex. I'd rather have Rex up there, but he's not released for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, look at this. Super fun with the battle droids. I've got more battle droids and uh, maybe we'll, on Instagram, I'll throw some more photos up and we'll, we'll have some fun with those. Uh, but I'm uh, I'm pretty stoked with these guys. Pretty stoked. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. If you want to get these, you can get them right now. They're in stock with Pop Collectibles, discount code patrol, link, in the description below. Definitely check them out for all your day one releases, first or second batch. Uh, if you want to get stuff super early, not wait on the states to get all their batches in, um, then you can do that. They are uh, super fast. I mean, they're crazy, crazy fast. Um, but I'm uh, I'm super happy to have these. I can't wait for the other 10 that I've got coming in bound. Dude, come on. The army building is real. For reals. It's going to be a thing. If you haven't already subscribed, guys, we're on our way to 60K. Please do so. If you like this video, I need to know in the comment section down below. Maybe let me know which pose you like the best. Let me know how many of these troopers you're getting. And maybe let me know if this video influenced you at all on the number of troopers you might be getting. You're going to get more or less based on this video. Let me know if it was helpful to you. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, click what you like. See you next time.